Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for coming to our campus. Thank you for having us. Awesome, y'all. This place is amazing. We really enjoyed the show. I think we all <laughs> we all watched it. So. Um, well, that, that's <laughs> good. Glad you came and watched it. About the, the least you could say. <laughs> we all no. really enjoyed it. In fact, we all watched it. Okay, so I guess I'll jump right into questions. Um, did you guys always know that you wanted to be a comedian? Yes, I wanted to be a comedian from a very early age. I didn't know if it was like sketch comedy or stand-up comedy, but very early on. <clears throat> first I saw on I Love Lucy, Ricky Ricardo's job, and I wanted that. I wanted to work in a nightclub. Then I found out I couldn't be a conga drum player due to lack of talent. <laughs> so I realized that I wanted to be uh, a comedian from like five. So it's only been one goal my whole life, which is both sad, it's a little inspiring, but maybe just sad. Mm. See? Uh, I want to be a Ghostbuster. Yes. And then that turns to comedian. <laughs> yeah. Because I want to be Bill Murray or Eddie Murphy growing up. And I think I want to be Axel Foley or what is Bill Murray's character? Peter Vakeman. Peter Vakeman. Yeah. Peter Vakeman was one of so those. Someone, someone, someone cracking wise. Yeah, well, I was at the cracking wise. I didn't like Bugs Bunny. It's like, I like early Daffy Duck. If anybody wants to nerd it up, Daffy Duck before Chuck Jones fucked him up. So, <laughs> I like uh, <laughs> Ernie from Bert and Ernie a lot. Because yeah. he, he, he and Bert's dynamic reminded me of me and my brother. Because mm -hmm. my brother was like a little quieter. And I just felt like Ernie, he wasn't, a, he wasn't like causing trouble. He just loved mischief a little, you know? <laughs> I was always a Gonzo guy. Because, Love Gonzo. Gonzo's fitted. legit funny. Yeah, he was good. But he always just kind of was a little off, you know? Yeah, he was, like, he was a little off. And then when you thought about it, though, then, like, he had like a, his favorite sandwich was bananas and peanut butter. You learned yeah. that about the babies. And people were like, ew. When you think about it, you go... It's not that bad. Yeah, that was Elvis's favorite sandwich, too. Yeah. <laughs> so it answered your question. <laughs> yes. A little while. Cute um, so did, did you have any comedians that you looked up to? Yeah, well, a lot. I uh, So many, it's crazy. I mean, I liked Richard Pryor and George Carlin a lot, but those are kind of the easy answers. That's who everyone looks up to. I also really, uh, I liked this comedian named Dennis Wolfberg and this comedian George Wallace. Who I would watch on cable when I was younger. They were like they were like the people I saw on TV a lot. I liked everyone on Saturday Night Live. I liked Conan O'Brien so much. Well, um, when that show premiered, that was huge for me. Mm -hmm. And then still, I still like Paul F. Tompkins, Louis C.K., Amy Aziz, Seton Smith, everyone. Yeah, yeah, I think I agree with him. I think uh, the earliest memory I think my family went to go see Raw uh, with Eddie Murphy, and I was not uh, invited. I think ever since then, I always just want to be in the room. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, everybody. You got you got to see Raw. We we're gonna finally take you someday. <laughs> <laughs> finally, what the yeah. whole hubbub was about. <laughs> uh, awesome. So you studied English at Georgetown. Yeah. And um, obviously you can't say comedy, but I know that you went to college too. Where, um, where did you go? <laughs> <laughs> I like you. Uh, <laughs> uh, I understand you also. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Howard in D.C. Also, we went to we uh, went to the same school. I mean, we were in the same uh, city, lived in the same city for a while. We never met, though. No, we <laughs> met in D.C. a couple years later. Okay. At a comedy club called the D.C. Improv. Oh, well, Actually, awesome. 11 years after. I, I know. <laughs> I was trying to make it seem more like, yeah, we didn't meet in college. But then a couple years later, meeting 11. <laughs> um, so, wait, did, you study, did you study art? Yeah, I was a film major. Okay. Um, how, did so, you wait, how did you know that? You just guessed that. Oh, you just guessed that. I've seen the vibes. No, <laughs> we, we, awesome. did a little, we did a little bit of research. <laughs> oh, cool. But um, so I guess how does that transfer into comedy? Oh, um, art. Um, well, comedy is an art form, and uh, you know I have this theory because I started doing kung fu, and uh, you know it's called martial. Wait, 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 when did you start doing kung fu? Well, I started uh, last May. But um, what you're doing boxing? I'm doing sorry. I'm doing sorry. I say kung fu. It's really MMA. But Kung Fu... You're doing MMA? I thought you were boxing. No, it's just actually it's like this form. It's like boxing. It's MMA boxing and then it's like uh, jujitsu. So it's split up. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I say, I say, Are you still doing trapeze? Uh, no. no. You were doing trapeze for a while. Too. I was trained to be a trapeze catcher for like three months. It was, they were great. They were very like, hey, you want to do it? I was like, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> you mean you could have actually been a trapeze catcher with the amount of training you had? Yeah. Honestly, if the show didn't get canceled, I probably would have been a trapeze catcher because I was doing that a lot of my free time. In L.A.? Yeah. Interesting. Well, I'm very sorry it got canceled. Yeah, no. I think the great tragedy of its cancellation is that you never got to be a <laughs> trapeze catcher. You know how many black catchers there are right now? That's true. Market. You've been the Jackie Robinson of trapeze catchers. I mean, at the very least, Tyler Perry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the very least. Uh, <laughs> that would mean you would have, like, a multi-million dollar trapeze catching empire. It would be
flying from Wires. And from, I'm sorry, this is for from, their uh, I apologize. school. I apologize, uh, Ohio State. This is not where we're trying to go. This, this is a, for the Lantern <laughs> TV, man. This is a I was wondering how long it was going to take. <laughs> <laughs> I think I said probably the third time, third episode of Millennium. I think uh, they had to say cut. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, probably yeah, not yeah. the script scene. And I was yeah. like, oh, oh. Okay. You, would say that, you would say that as an exclamation if you forgot a line. Yes, 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 yes. And then the crowd of, <laughs> I think there was like four black people in the building. <laughs> Everybody be like, okay, see, let's, let's get this rant over with. Okay, um, so <laughs> we could do this take again, but this time don't say the one thing you said. Yeah, don't call Martin Short. Uh, <laughs> um, so how was your experience on working on Mulaney? Would you want to do another network show? Or? That specific type of network show was... That, that was a lot of people involved. That was a lot of different hands involved. Um, making it was super fun. It came out and didn't do well. That was not fun. But, man, we had a lot of fun making it. Yeah. it that specific type of thing, though, where you're working with a network and then a studio. The NBC was the studio. Fox was the network. Everyone, by the way, was very nice. But it's kind of a, a cluster blank of people. And it was like... Uh, that that specifically, I wouldn't want to do again. But doing some type of TV show would be great. Awesome. Yeah. It was really fun, though. Yeah. Did you have fun? I have amazing time. Did you have a good time? It is really good. It was really. Good. I mean, you don't. You have to say that. I know. But I do. I absolutely have to say that. <laughs> I'll say that until the day I die, or until I get richer than you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then might be a massive tell off. <laughs> yeah, my birthday party. We'll <laughs> sell me to your island off Atlanta. <laughs> so I guess transitioning to those on um, TV shows. Um, SNL, obviously. Uh -huh. um, so what, like, what was it like auditioning for SNL? Oh, the audition was fun because <clears throat> I just did like stand-up that had characters in it, and I knew I wasn't going to get it. So mm -hmm. I was nervous for sure, but I wasn't as scared as you could be because the show at that time had Bill Hader, Will Forte, Fred Armisen, Jason Sudeikis, Seth Meyers. There were enough skinny white dudes that there was no <laughs> way I was going to get on, and Andy Samberg. There was no way I was going to get on. So I was just like, well, this will be a cool story. I'll be able to tell my kids like I auditioned for Lord Michaels. And then I got hired as a writer, which was like the best. I mean, we had, you have so much freedom as a writer. Like you produced the whole show. You learned so much about TV. It was great. So obviously Stefan was really popular. Well, yeah. But uh, <laughs> were there any other sketches that um, you wrote that maybe didn't get as much popularity but were your favorite? Um, I wrote a character with Bill called Herb Welch that I really liked. He was a really cranky newsman. Um, I wrote this thing with Fred and Bill called The Kissing Family that no one seemed to like that. Well, I don't know. I, I, it was this family that was way too affectionate. Uh, and the son went to Miami of Ohio. So there's your Ohio connection. A different school, I know, but he went to Miami. Oh, great. Um, so how about any sketches? Because I know, I guess, a lot of them... Get, get cut? Get cut, yes. Yeah, so but uh, like, for me, like, I would have a lot in every week, but I would get at least two cut, two every I mean, and from Wednesday, from the table read for it, you'd have like five or so that didn't make it. So over four years, you acquire like close to a hundred <laughs> sketches that never made it on. I, you also tend to forget them. I mean, mm -hmm. I remember a few that I wrote with like Simon Rich that we held on to for years that we loved, but... Um, no, there were a lot. We had one about a, uh, a, a toilet, in case you were afraid of dying on the toilet. You know, like how people will die like on uh -huh. the toilet. It was like a great fear. Uh, so the, it was a commercial for a toilet death ejector that had a red <laughs> button on it. And when you felt yourself dying, you would hit a button and it would shoot you into the next room and aim you towards your bed so you would die comfortably in bed, but you would still have your pants around your ankles. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh. We did, yeah. I remember we built the toilet death ejector and it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work as a sketch and that should have been an, like an omen to not try to... <laughs> <laughs> so then, obviously, I guess, kind of a little back, back to Melanie. So how did you guys... Um, you said you met at the, uh, the DC the, the Improv? The DC Improv, yeah. It was a comedy club there. So uh, we did a show together. We did a weekend together there. Mm -hmm. And then um, I had written this character for the NBC pilot. And I wanted him to audition. Uh, and you'd, give him a you'd given me a DVD of your stuff when we met. Yeah. And he auditioned. <clears throat> and then everyone independently that was working on the show 
uh, America Sawyer was the writer, and Robert Carlock, who uh, was uh, uh, producing the pilot at NBC, independently was like, oh, that's the guy. And then I was like, which guy? And they were like, you know, number three. And I watched it, and it was like, perfect, that's the one I want. Oh, awesome. That's going to be really Yeah. You didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't want to, you know, flatter you too much. No, <laughs> that story. It's a great story. <laughs> See, it w warms your heart. Now you won't tell me off as much once you're rich. <laughs> no, exactly. No, I'll hold that back. <laughs> um, so I was actually going to ask you about this. You kind of touched on it in your set about um, Oh Hello with uh, Nick Kroll. Uh -huh. um, so you said that you started that a long time ago. Yeah. Did I say? Oh, well, the, I think they said it in the introduction. Yeah, we oh. started doing that in 2005. Oh, yeah. Like as characters, we hosted a stand-up show as those characters and brought up stand-ups and then we would interview them. So, mm. I guess, how did that all start? We, we wanted to host a show. We were doing stand-up a lot. And it was like, we had this Thursday night show. And I think we were just like, boy, it'd be fun to do something different than stand-up because we like doing sketch comedy and stuff. And then we, we remember these two old guys we saw at a used bookstore in New York <laughs> who like wore turtlenecks and blazers and were just like, they're like professors. But, but you know those professors who like aren't that respected, like, <laughs> uh, but they've been here a long time? Uh, it was like, we wanted to just talk, we just wanted to talk and host as those like older men who just liked comedians and mm -hmm. had them on the show. And then we did that, <clears throat> we morphed it into uh, a prank show called Too Much Tuna on Kroll Show on Comedy Central. Then we did like a couple live appearances and then we did an off-Broadway run and now we've done it as a tour. And I think we're taking it back to New York in the fall. So it's been a remarkably long time for like two really stupid characters. <laughs> it's been ten years. The shows, though, I will say, the live shows are really fun to be at because like a lot of like cool faces are there too. A lot of fun. Just like a lot of uh, people who kind of know what's going on. A lot of people don't know what's going on, and it's just a great. I got to sit next to Marnie from Girls, and she was just there randomly. It was a big fan. But that found that very You were there our closing night? Yeah. Oh, very nice. Yeah, I was very excited. Oh, so that was, was that off-Broadway? Yeah, yeah. There was at a place called the Cherry Lane Theater. So, what, so I guess what was the experience doing a live show off-Broadway? It was really fun. And it, it was like doing, I mean, stand-up sometimes you do the same jokes night after night. But there's so many other variables. With a play, it was funny to just be like, we do this story every night. And you'd think that that would get really repetitive and boring. And sometimes it gets close to that, but then it's really cool because you're like, well, I just did that line in a different way tonight. And I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but it'll like really feel cool. You're like, oh, there's endless amounts of ways to perform this play. So yeah. it, it was like, we did, we did it 25 days in a row, you know. Uh, and since we've been on tour, we've done it, you know, probably double that. So it's been... Uh, Still really fun. So I guess um, for both of you, do you have any advice for young people who want to get into comedy? <clears throat> yeah, start your own comedy show at a live venue because it's really hard to just go to places and ask to do stand-up. But if you have your own show, then you invite people to do your show, you host it, you get to do at least a half hour of stand-up a night, and then other people that do your show go, hey, I have a show, will you come do my show? So. First, move to a city where they have bars and places to do comedy, and then start your own comedy event. That's the best advice I can give you. Oh, also, um, if you want to be a writer, you should film something that you wrote, because it's way easier to watch something than to read something. Books on conversation. Figure out how to become, like, be a good per like, how to, not a good person, but just figure out what's interesting. And basic conversation skills, that's useful for stand-up. They just, yeah. they think it's just a joke. No, just really, like, learn how to say hello and be polite. Yeah. Ninety percent of it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming to Ohio State and for sitting down and talking no, please, to us today. No, please. We've always wanted to do Lantern TV, so thank you so much. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. That's um, fun.